Hey everyone, Crash from Crash Customs, Lake Havasu, Arizona. And today, Saturday, I'm gonna be getting on my dually here. If you didn't see it. previous videos my lower control arm broke and I knew it was a problem and I have the parts to swap it out but I'm gonna be uh, getting rid of those and putting some uh, 24 inch 10 lug semi wheels on and my plan for that is getting rid of the C30 suspension pieces and putting C20 suspension pieces on. And I already have that stuff. And I already took it off the vehicle. A while ago, I bought this really just for the sheet metal. The missing pieces are elsewhere around here. But for those that didn't know, 63 on up Chevy truck, this gen and the square bodies, the cross members and suspension pieces are really all interchangeable. And I know it says C10, but when I bought it, it had a completely rebuilt C20 chassis under it. And at the time, I, I didn't care about the chassis. I just wanted the sheet metal. So, the disc brake front end. And uh, I got them over here. What a mess. I gotta clean them up, but they're all new. No, no marks on the pads or the rotors. I will not be putting in the coil springs either. So there's gonna be a little bit of a upgrade there. And I've kind of been uh, slacking on it. It's been sitting here for a whole week and I had to work on customer stuff to, uh, you know, pay the bills. But I just gotta get my mind right. It's Saturday, jump into this grease pit. It's got a power steering leak. I got the pieces to fix that too. And uh, would have been nice if I could have got it on here. Be a lot easier, but I've done plenty of jobs without a hoist before. So current plan is to get this side sorted out and uh, functioning and hopefully I can drive it on to the four post and do the other side and the other miscellaneous things that I gotta do. So, stop talking, start working. Got some of it apart, and uh, I gotta look at this job a little differently. I unbolted the lower shock, which that bushing is junk also. Doesn't matter, it's coming apart. But when I did that, it dropped the control arm, and now there's no tension on the coil, and I usually use the tension on the coil to bust the upper, low, lower, upper ball joints loose. Because I kind of wanted to take this apart, apart in pieces so it was lighter. But now it's kind of looking like uh, I have to take the control arms off at the frame. That side, the broke side is already off. I gotta do that side and then I'll probably take the upper control arm off at the frame and I don't have to worry about tension just a lot of weight of metal think smart work smart trying not to crush any body parts
that was a greasy, grimy mess. And it obviously always takes longer than you think it's going to. You know, it's just a couple bolts and everything falls off, right? Should be should go quick. Well, it's uh, it's actually sitting on the ground upside down. It kind of uh, fell gracefully off and rolled that way. Nothing got hurt. My body work and paint is still good. I have all my fingers. Nothing got smashed. I'm gonna degrease this mess. Kind of clean things up a bit. Not show car clean, but when I work on it clean, you know what I mean? I got it as clean as I care to get it clean. At least now it's not a total grease pit when I work on it. I also decided now that uh, the control arms are out, now would be a good time to take the wheel well out. My plan was to always take it out and make new inner fenders. Uh, you can obviously see the wheel tire combo that was on it with the height was rubbing. If I took a corner, turned, and uh, took it too fast with body roll. The uh, wheels and tires that I'm putting on are a little bit taller than what was on it. So that needs to happen anyways. So that's what I'm going to do. Here is what I was running. 225, 75, 16. Nice polished Alcoas. I was fine with them. But I wasn't in love with them. I was never in love with them. So, had to roll this one out, 24, 275, 30, 24, square hole. I've had these for, shit, about seven years. Found them at the junkyard in town. And for the guys that own salvage yards, this is not a salvage yard, it's a junkyard. So I scooped them up then, kind of stockpile parts for when I'm ready to put them on. They were a good deal. They were a good deal. Had a machine down, found out that, I guess these are a pretty rare wheel. Volvo made them for like two years back in the 90s. I just wanted semi wheels. I do think the square holes are pretty cool, especially on a square body. Gotta polish them yet. This is just like uh, sanded down with maybe, I don't know, maybe this is 800 grit. Try to make the buff a little easier. It will be a little bit of work to get that inner wheel well out, mostly because there's a bunch of stuff in the engine bay that is bolted to it. My train horns, Second battery tray. It's not awful. Emissions junk. Not awful. It'll just be a little time consuming. And then, obviously, I'll have to find a way to relocate some of this. I know how to relocate that. Right in the dumpster. out easier than I had thought. Grimy though, grimy. From the power steering leak. She's in need of some maintenance. That's how it goes. I do like using it up though. Makes the repair feel better when you know what you're repairing is totally worn out, I think. All right, clean out this spaghetti. Let me give you a little bit of history on my dually. Back in 06 is when I bought it. And it was a pretty old, worn out custom truck. There's the before picture. I already took the cap off in this picture. 
Uh, but you can tell it was done in the 80s, late 80s, maybe early 90s, was pearl white, faded paint, pretty beat. And back then, when they lowered it, they cut the coils. And uh, I left it like that until now. And I'm not into coils at all. To me, it's either bags or adjustable coil overs. So on this, with the real low profiles that I'm putting on, I'm putting bags on it and uh, hoping to get a better ride out of it. It's uh, not really gonna sit any lower than what it was. I got uh, drop spindles for it. It didn't have drop spindles before. Like I said, they just cut coils on it and drove it and it rode awful. So what I like to do is, I, I always use Slam Specialty bags. I like them the best. They don't expand out when you put air in them. And uh, I, I really like the way they ride. But when I'm setting things up and mocking it up, instead of moving the bag in and out and dealing with that, I just have plastic pipe that's cut to uh, three inches. The slam bags when compressed are 2.9, basically three inches. That way, when I put the bag brackets in, which these said they fit, and they didn't fit, and I had to modify them. When I take them back out, I'll show you what I did to modify them against the other pair that aren't modified yet. And on my blazer, there was a plate here. So the bag bolted to that, and the plate bolted to this flange, a little different style. Would have been easier if I got that same style again, but I didn't. Didn't, doesn't matter, I made it work. But I like to set the cups up so when the bag is compressed, it, they're parallel to one another. And with that plastic pipe spacer, it's uh, easier to move that around than trying to deal with bags, I think. And then when you got it, then I bolt the bags in and do a, a real test fit. I'll pull those out, put them on the bench. The uppers and lowers both had to be modified to fit the truck. And I'll show you what I did to modify them. It wasn't, it wasn't that involved, but still time consuming. This is how they came. That's the upper, that's the lower. This is my modified lower. I changed the diameter because they didn't seat in the lower control arm where the spring used to sit it was just I mean that's how how much it was off so it was super easy I just put three slices and it's hard to tell because I painted them black but so slice 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 bent them in, welded it, closed up the diameter just a little bit. And now the cup sits all the way to the bottom of the lower control arm. And then the upper, that's how it came. This is what I had to do to modify it. I moved the mounting nut for the threaded rod to bolt it in out a little further. The upper frame has a curvature to it. And there's, you're not drilling a hole easily through that and it's double flanged. So I've relocated the mounting stud. And then the spring pocket, upper spring pocket on the frame has really large rivets. And the top of the cup was sitting on the rivets and wobbling, no matter how much you bolted it in tight with the threaded stud, it wobbled. So I put four notches in it to clear those rivets in the frame. And 
I had to do an angle cut to it. You can see the one that I got behind it. It's not modified. It's just flat, straight pipe. It needed an angle to it to get the bag to sit where I wanted it to sit when it's compressed. And that hole is just around airline through. I'll have a 90 degree swivel fitting on the bag. That's kind of irrelevant. You can run them out the side or up the top, however you want your airlines to run. So, like I said, it wasn't anything major, just a little time consuming and typical. Wasn't planning on it. Thought I was getting by with uh, bolt-in ready parts. Well, let me show you the rivets that I was talking about. Right there. You can see the coil set inside those rivets. And right there is the hole I drilled for the stud before they had it going through that center area. And that's, uh, it's all contoured and yeah, just, it was, was more, would have been more work than just welding the mounting nut in a different spot on the cup. Been cleaning up some of the parts from the parts truck and the parts washer and check out that dust shield. That's a little banged up. Pretty sure I can straighten that though. Why wait for a new one? Just hammer that one out in a couple minutes. Spray it up. Put it back on. minutes straight clean it up blow some paint on it should be great for my work truck all right I finally have the dually off the ground which it was there finally on the hoist make things a little bit easier for me and I did not record everything that it took just to do one side. I'll tell you uh, about the trials and tribulations of aftermarket parts. But it feels good to have it on here finally. This side's done with just a C20 wheel, not the semi wheel or the adapter, obviously. This side is still stock C30. I'll swap that out today and tomorrow probably. It's pretty obvious, I think. I'm probably wearing different clothes in each segment, but this is not being done in one session. It's just too much going on at the shop for me to just hammer away on it for however long. So I, it's like everybody, everybody's got work, everybody's got life, and uh, it's hard to finish projects up in uh, one session, so. I'm going to drop it down, take the wheels off both sides, and uh, let you see <laughs> the little bit of irritations that I've had to deal with with aftermarket parts. That's really how it goes. It's always like that. I tell customers that the aftermarket parts get you really close, usually, if you're lucky. <laughs> Almost never. They're... They just don't bolt on and you keep moving on to the next step. You got to mess with it. So for you guys that uh, do this yourself, just, you know, accept it. Get your mind right <laughs> and just know you're going to have to deal with parts that you're going to have to tweak a little to get the project done. It's uh, 
probably easier than uh, making the part yourself. Especially like if it's a cast drop spindle. Nobody's casting and dropping their own spindles. So I'll show you that and a couple other things that uh, held me up. But if you do take your stuff to a shop and you're asking for an estimate or a price and they don't want to give you an exact price or estimate, this is why. I'll show you why. <laughs> They don't want to do that, and uh, it's it's uh, it's tough. It's tough unless you got a shop that is only doing one specific vehicle or type of vehicle, and they know that when they order the part, they're going to have to tweak it, and they figure that into their estimate or their price. We like to call it a guesstimate, actually, because uh, we work on everything that's old or custom here. We don't lock ourselves into one vehicle. And uh, it's just how it is. It's, you got general knowledge and you got to expect that the parts are going to be off slightly, hopefully, just a little. Because when you have to send stuff back and forth and talk to the tech department, which is really just somebody looking at the computer screen, reading back the same internet page that they loaded to you that you already read. It's uh, a lot of it is a waste of time. It's easier just to modify it at the shop and get the project done and go back and forth with the manufacturer. All right, let me show you what I had to deal with. I already showed you the bag cups had to be modified top and bottom. That's fine. But the spindles, Here's the drop spindle. Stock, stock spindle. I'm sure most of you guys know, but some of you don't. The difference between a stock spindle and a drop spindle is the point where the wheel attaches. This brake goes on here, all the other pieces, caliper, and then the wheel bolts on. So stock, this is the top. And this is the bottom. There's the mount, right? And here's the dropped one. Top, bottom, and the mount. The mount is moved up, which makes the vehicle sit lower. But anyways, I put the aftermarket ones on. Caliper assembly, new pads, and it didn't want to go on. It was way too tight on this side you couldn't get it on with a new uh, brake pad and what i discovered was the mounting surface for the caliper here and here stock here and here aftermarket this thickness is less on the stock one. So, you know, measure. That's the width of the stock one. Aftermarket. Look at that. You see that? It don't slide on. So, it's like a sixteenth. Maybe even a hair more. Top and bottom. So I, you know, machined this down with uh, pretty high tech tool right here. Very precise. <laughs> really, if you just work it the same rhythm, the same pattern, back and forth, same speed, same motion it's it'll be fine bolted on so that's what i had to do for the spindles so had to mo modify both cup bags had to modify the spindles to get the caliper on with the new pads it's really like this no matter what the product is suspension body panels aftermarket body panels are the worst uh they're not the worst. They're better than creating it from scratch, but you usually have to modify everything to make 
it fit. So all you can do is keep, keep on trucking. You know what I mean? Get it done. That will be the end of part one for the dually suspension, converting C30 over to C20 to fit big semi wheels. Pay attention, come back for part two, make sure I'm still going in the right direction. Please like, comment and subscribe. We really do appreciate it. Come back for part two of turning this dually into a 10 lug thug.